Sutra of Relationships, The Law of Love People don't love those who care for them, but rather those into whom they have invested their own time, effort, money, and care. We allow ourselves to be loved and invest in love ourselves. This is the law of relationships, we love those into whom we've invested something, made significant sacrifices whether it's time, effort, energy, money, or other resources. This applies to all types of relationships marital, familial, or friendships. For example, it may seem strange, but in marriage, spouses who need care are more valued whether it's meeting them at the airport late at night, making breakfast early in the morning, or other acts of effort. Because without such effort, without striving, without making sacrifices, material or otherwise, there won't be a sense of value in the relationship. People love those into whom they have invested, not those who have invested in them. Those who care, give, or help feel better, more confident, and active, gaining higher self-esteem. Research conducted by psychologists N. Weinstein and R. Ryan shows that giving has a profound effect on the giver. It is the giver who feels more committed to the object of their investment, note researchers Sean Horan and Melanie Booth Butterfield. This phenomenon can be explained by the concept of sunk costs past costs that cannot be recovered by present or future actions. These costs, in turn, create a tendency to become more involved and attached to something or someone due to the time, money, and effort invested. In other words, we begin to value something or someone more when we have personally invested and worked hard to achieve it. Psychotherapist Carl Ruspold believes there are different types of investments in relationships, such as shared friends, jointly acquired property, and resources like money, time, and effort. Ruspold defines investments as everything a person puts into a relationship, which could be lost if the relationship ends. According to his observations, the more someone has invested in a relationship, the less likely they are to leave it. Therefore, it is clear that if we invest our energy, time, money, and care into our partner, we become more attached to them and value them more. On the other hand, if we want our partner to value us, we need to allow them to invest in us and learn to accept their gifts. Often, we refuse to accept gifts, mistakenly believing that only self-sacrifice and constant care for our partner can evoke gratitude and love. Unfortunately, such hopes remain unfulfilled. The object of overwhelming care and love doesn't feel particularly grateful and isn't sufficiently loyal to us and our relationship. Therefore, the role of the perpetual donor is ungrateful. It's better to allow our partner to do something pleasant for us too and invest in the relationship. We shouldn't be afraid to ask for something in return and express our expectations. Our generosity will surely evoke reciprocal emotions in our partner if they feel they have the opportunity to give back. This approach allows us to pay each other back, strengthening mutual attachment and loyalty. An example of the value of investments is parental love. In the animal kingdom, parental care ensures the survival of the species. Different forms of caring for offspring are an advanced evolutionary acquisition, providing greater adaptability of the growing organism to the conditions of its life in postnatal development. The true essence of love lies in renouncing one's self consciousness, forgetting oneself in another eye, and yet, in this disappearance and forgetfulness, finally finding oneself and possessing oneself. George Hegel However, caring for offspring brings about an increasing conflict between the needs of the parent and those of the child. By spending time and energy caring for the young, the parent increases the child's fitness at the expense of their own. That is why caring for offspring is considered a form of altruistic behavior. We can only speculate about what animals feel and what drives their care for offspring. In human society, 
these forms of altruistic behavior are most often explained by one word love. Love is a very energy-consuming process, requiring a large expenditure of energy. However, nature never wastes energy. Love helps the species survive and become more resilient. Parental care is also a form of altruism, as the parent reduces their own adaptability by spending time and energy raising their young. Nature is specifically interested in this form of behavior, making parental love one of the strongest feelings in human life. They say parental love is like a golden ball, flying in one direction. And only when children themselves become parents do they pass this golden ball to their offspring. Such love is described in the Ngush folk tale The Father and the Son. Once, an old man, his son, and his grandson went out to mow the field. It was a hot day, and the sun was beating down relentlessly. The boy was without a hat, and the sun could have burned his head. So, his father took off his own hat and put it on the boy, while he remained bareheaded. Then the old man took off his hat and placed it on his son's head. The famous French existentialist philosopher of the mid-twentieth century, Jean-Paul Sartre, wrote that in another person whom we love, we subconsciously want to see ourselves the best qualities we ourselves lack. In his book Being and Nothingness, in the chapter on relationships between lovers, Sartre calls it love, language, and masochism. Language cannot truly express love, precisely because we usually do not admit to ourselves, nor can we fully understand, why we love. Love is selfish in the other person, we love ourselves, not the other as they really are. That's why we are ready to make sacrifices and easily become masochists in love because of excessive self-love. The word love means two different things, simply love, that is, passion, and charity. Somerset Mom Sartre is not original in these reflections. The famous French writer Marcel Proust described the love of the refined aristocrat Swan for a woman of questionable reputation who was neither particularly beautiful nor graceful. According to Proust, Swan loved his image, his vision of this woman, rather than her as she truly was. However, the question of what is real is a philosophical one. For us, the most real thing is what we ourselves believe in. Especially if we see our own superiority over others like the aristocrat swan a person like that will believe in their perception of the world more than in the opinions of others. In the Eastern poem about the lovers Majanun and Layla, it is said that only Majanun sees Layla's beauty not because Layla is not beautiful, but because only the gaze of a lover truly makes her beautiful. And Layla, like every woman, blooms from love, her eyes light up her movements become lively and graceful. On the contrary, she seems plain when she is not loved. In the beautiful words of the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi, the feelings of love striving for the highest pleasure selflessness are expressed, Lord, help me not so much to seek comfort, but to comfort others. Not so much to seek understanding, but to understand others. Not so much to seek love, but to love others. For truly, it is in giving that we receive. It is in forgetting oneself that one finds oneself again. It is in forgiving that we are forgiven. It is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Where there is love, there is care. The only life worth living is a life lived for others. Albert Einstein Christianity saw in love the essence of God, who is love and loves all himself. This is the main commandment he leaves to man. It speaks of a special divine love, agape, which is unlike either sensual eros or friendly philia a self-sacrificing, all-encompassing love for one's neighbor. According to Christian doctrine, man is the image of God, in man, I see the mystery of theology. 
It is precisely care and love for others, in the image of the divine, that are commanded to Christians. A person gradually becomes close to those about whom their heart has cared and for whom their soul has worried, my children, for whom I am again in the pains of childbirth until Christ is formed in you. Galatians 4.19, says the Apostle Paul to his disciples, who have become truly dear and beloved to him during the time of instruction and teaching. And as confirmation of the law of love, how many reproaches and sorrowful words from misunderstood parents does the Lord convey to his disobedient people who forget about God's care, thus says the Lord, For your sake, I will send warriors to Babylon and break them, turning the Chaldeans into fugitives. Behold, I am doing a new thing. It is already happening do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and rivers in the dry land. But you, Jacob, did not call on me, you grew weary of me, Israel, you burdened me with your sins and wearied me with your iniquities, Isaiah 43 14 24. And despite the fact that the chosen people so often strayed from the Lord's commandments, God never stopped loving them, for a father cannot renounce his child into whom he has poured so much love. In Islam, the highest manifestation of love is considered love for Allah. This is perfect love. By investing and doing everything to earn Allah's pleasure, a Muslim does good first and foremost for themselves. After all, what seems like sacrifices and investments is actually the source of strength and development for the person. A believer who loves Allah loves everything that comes from him everything that is given to a person in their life. Any manifestation of love in life is the result and fruit of perfect love for the Almighty. Muslims believe that love for Allah is measured by the degree of a believer's submission and devotion to the Creator, Quran 42,23. That is, in striving to attain Allah's pleasure, a person trusts Him and follows His commands and law. The readiness to completely dedicate one's life to serving Allah testifies to a person's perfect love for God. This love is the foundation of Iman, or true faith. If we recall the Islamic prophets and other righteous people, all of them dedicated their lives to serving Allah. By performing good deeds, they gained Allah's pleasure and drew closer to Him. Therefore, the more good deeds a Muslim performs in striving to please Allah, the more they love him. Good feelings are the neighbors of love. We love the one we care for. Antoine de Saint-Exupéry Love is the ability to feel oneself as one with other people, as it is considered in Judaism. When a person is born, it seems to them that they are at the center of the world, that the whole world belongs to them and that there is no one else in the world besides them. As they grow older, they gradually begin to understand that there are other people in this world who have their own lives, thoughts, and feelings. But since a person will never, even after living 120 years, feel the experiences and pain of others, or think with their thoughts, the only way for them to understand others is through themselves. For a person who loves their family, I equals their entire family. For someone who loves all the residents of their city, the I grows and embraces all their fellow citizens. And for someone who loves all the people on earth, the I embraces the entire world. Such a person feels that they and all the people of the world are one. According to Judaism, this is what the Creator desires when He commands. Love your neighbor as yourself. Leviticus 19:18. Every Jew should feel that all other Jews are part of themselves. That's why it says as yourself to feel them as part of you. We always identify with those we find agreeable. Interestingly, the word love in Aramaic Rahamim also means mercy. Whom are we merciful to? To the one whose place we can imagine ourselves in and thus we love them. Care for people, once it enters the heart, turns into a true treasure. Benjamin Johnson
Those who love are loved by God. But there is another way to love your neighbor. This way is hinted at by the word Ahava love. The root of this word, HAV, in Aramaic means give. Human nature is such that when a person invests in something, they become attached to it and feel it as part of themselves. That is why Jewish sages said that a small crop that a person has grown themselves is much dearer to them than a significantly larger crop that they did not work for. When we give something to our neighbor, when we invest in them, we feel them as part of ourselves, and therefore, we can love them. For example, the more a husband and wife are together, the more they invest in building a true bond and unity, the more their love for each other grows. For Buddha and Buddhists, love is a subtle blend of joy and compassion. This spiritual approach suggests that we sacrifice our controlling and selfish desires to dominate the object of our love. For a Buddhist, to love means to joyfully and respectfully acknowledge the other person while being wise enough not to hinder their growth and development. Buddha reminds us in his texts, to love someone, we must observe them and understand what makes them happy. But the most important and difficult thing is equanimity and freedom in a relationship. And this is something many of us find hard to accept. Buddhism teaches that we need to reconsider many of our habits, eradicate feelings of possessiveness, jealousy, and domination to make our partner happy. This is a significant investment, but over time, it will surely pay off. Love arises as the most free and unpredictable expression of the depths of personality, it cannot be forced nor overcome. This is the reason for many dramas and experiences because this feeling knows no social, class, age, or other limitations. The Russian Emperor Peter the Great married purely for love. His wife was a simple Latvian peasant girl, Marta Skavrinska. The Emperor, who could have chosen a wife from among the most noble princesses of Europe, raised the poor, illiterate peasant girl to the heavens. Peter sent his first wife, Eudoxia, to a distant monastery and married his new companion. Marta was baptized into Orthodoxy, becoming Catherine Alexeevna. There is only one certain happiness in life to live for others. Leo Tolstoy Whom I love, I give. But the emperor's beloved repaid his love with betrayal. She fell in love with Chamberlain Willem Mons and didn't feel the need to restrain herself in her passion. The affair came to light. Peter was beside himself with rage. He ordered Mons to be executed. The Chamberlain was beheaded, and his head was preserved in a jar. What did the great emperor do to his unfaithful wife? Almost nothing. He showed her the lover's head and didn't speak to her for two weeks. That was all. Then she was crowned with the imperial crown, becoming not just the emperor's wife, but the empress. It's hard to say whether Marta would have achieved such success if she had truly loved her husband. Probably not. But she had a much more important talent, she knew how to allow herself to be loved. The truth of love is to give up self-consciousness, to love oneself in the other, and yet, in this disappearance and forgetfulness, to first find oneself and take possession of oneself. Hegel formulated this so simply and succinctly. Spiritual laws assume complete selflessness in love, for in love, one exists in the high and subtle vibrations of the universe, protected by it. There is nothing that a loving person wouldn't want to give to the one they love. We love the one we have cared for, invested time, effort, and energy in. And this is not because the feeling is so irrational. Simply, by investing all that is most precious to us in another, we find ourselves, becoming truly ourselves in the other, through the joy of self-giving. And such giving brings the lover extraordinary, supreme happiness and peace. It's bad if no one cares for you. 
It's even worse if you have no one to care for. Stanislaw Jersey LEC Loving is hard, not loving is harder. He who sows the wind will reap the whirlwind.